Welcome everyone to the Kendall Report where I share my 42 years of experience to help you manage your portfolios and protect your wealth. Remember to subscribe, like, and share these videos. Hello, I'm Bob Kendall, founder of Portfolio Expert. And just to tell you, we do have a special offer right now to get 20% off our platform. Make sure you go to Kendall Report slash expert. The special sales code is expert. Let's get into tonight's video. Yesterday's action was interesting. Looking at some of the headlines and some of the rhetoric around the markets yesterday, you would think it collapsed and it was going straight down and it, it was all over. In fact, what we saw was the S&P down 0.3, the NASDAQ up 0.1, and the Russell down 0.7. All within the context of what I discussed in last night's video, but we're seeing a little more weakness. I thought we would see possibly going down to S2. I'll go through all the details here in a minute in the technicals. We saw those be the defensive stocks once again. That kept the markets from declining very much just because of the bid in those stocks, Apple and Netflix and so on. But we also saw the 10-year notes continue to move higher. They moved up to 1.37. Been talking about this. I'll cover this a little more in detail in just a few minutes, but I do believe there's some things going on that is going to be significant as we go forward in the interest rates. Tonight, I want to focus a couple things, and I'll go through this in more detail in a few minutes on the technicals, but there's three things that I'm looking for that would signal a top in this market. And I would just preface it right now, none of these exist at the moment. The first thing that I'd look for is some type of outside reversal on a monthly basis. If we get that, that will signal that there's at least been a climactic price high. And then the next thing that has to happen is we need to get confirmations from PPM1 and primarily PPM2 that the momentum in this market is dissipating on a secular level. I don't see that happening right now. The other thing that I'm looking for is we'll need to have at least one negative quarter and that would suggest for this quarter, we'd have to close below 4233.13, a lower close than that at the end of this quarter. This is the second month of this third quarter. So at the end of the third quarter, if we close below that level, I would be a bit concerned, at least start to think that we're going to see some sort of rollover. The probabilities of getting there at the moment are very small. In fact, what I'm expecting, if anything like that were to happen, it wouldn't be until fourth quarter or first quarter of next year. So I still remain very constructive on this market. The algorithms were out in force yesterday telling everybody that the markets are worried about the Delta variant. I don't see that as a factor at this time, but we are starting to see some weakness and they're trying to relate it back all of a sudden back to the employment report that we saw on Friday. I don't know that that's the cause of that. I think most of this is a seasonal situation, as I discussed in last night's video, as we come into the end of the summer and possibly we'll see some of the recreational markets back up a little bit just because of the season itself. In summary, I don't see any of these things happening, but those are things I'll be watching for as we go through the weeks and months going forward. That is what I'm going to need to see to make a call for a major top. I just don't see it. The minimum possibility is not until fourth quarter, probably into first quarter of next year. I will keep a close eye looking for this evidence and we'll let you know the second I see it. Let's go ahead and get into the charts and see how they're set up for Wednesday. As I review the WaveTech database, once again, we got over the 50% level up to about 53%. We dropped 10% here overnight to 43.59. We're still above that magic 42% level I talk about on the database all the time. We saw 2,742 sell signals and 465 buy signals. This pushed it down, as I mentioned, to 4359 I'm not sure this is going to be material, but I do want to make a comment that this continues to be the type of action that we've seen for going back into around June, maybe even the early May, that we're seeing this rotation. We get up into the upper 
45 to 52 percent and we fall back into the range again so we're still seeing a rotation here i was hoping that we'd see some continued traction but we're just not getting that at this time to begin tonight i'm going to unpack some of these scenarios that i talked about in the opening comments as far as what i'm expecting to see when we when a major top is formed. And right now we're seeing a couple significant things that are the potential beginning of a correctional phase that could be a high level consolidation, maybe set up what I talk about a lot, a dragon head. That configuration is likely here, but we're seeing PPM1 actually still in a very robust trend mode, 2.22. PPM2, 1.72, PPM3, 1.41. These are very robust numbers, and this angle of attack that I've talked about before is very steep, suggesting that if we do trade down into the 10-month moving average, which is right now 41.37 and is rising about 100 points per month, so that'll put us up around the number I mentioned in the opening comments around that 42.33 level on the quarterly chart, but that's going to be major support. And that's quite a bit. That's a 300 point decline from here, about a five to seven percent. I don't see that happening. I'll show you in detail, but I'm going to stay with the long term right now. We're going to go over to trading view and look at the quarterly. And the quarterly chart, this is the level that I talked about last month was a the low has been 42.33, so if we get below that, that would actually turn it negative. And you can see something interesting here. Most of these market declines, and this chart that I've got up here right now, we're looking from around 1960 to current. And you'll see that there's only about, on the big declines, there's somewhere between four and six quarters negative, and we'll get a rally And in the case of 2003, and coming into the O coming into the O9 lows, this is where we saw about five quarters in a row negative. And you notice it's just spotty all along. And I can go back along this line here, and this pattern actually unfolds substantially. We go all the way back to the 1929 highs on the far left hand side. You can see there was about seven negative quarters during that period. And that's one of the most historic events. So it only takes three to five, maybe as many as seven quarters to be a historical event in the markets. And, you know, you can see this long term trend. I'll bring this whole chart up here. This is going back to to the lows at April 1877. And that that was actually an interesting time because we were actually having our first depression at that time. This was post-Civil War, and this is where a lot of money had been borrowed and there was a lot of debt rolling over at that time. So that was a significant event. Of course, we know 29 and then the between 69 and 74, and then, of course, the 2000 cycle at that high with the dot-com and then ultimately the, the Great Recession. So we've seen all this happen. So we're still in this upward cycle. We look at the PPMs here on a quarterly basis, and they're just absolutely screaming, suggesting that we are multiple quarters away from even getting to the point where they're going to be negative enough to actually see any type of decline. And this is what continues to keep me bullish on a longer term basis. This is looking at the secular trends from that viewpoint. Let's go to the short term analysis, looking at the S&P futures overnight. We're up four handles. We did trade down as low as 4513. So we've rallied 10 handles off the lows. It's interesting because in play now is 4514, which is the 10 period moving average. The PPM one has lost a lot of its momentum. So it's a bit vulnerable to the downside. The absolute major support is 4478. I discussed this in last night's video that that would be down around the 10 week moving average. I'll go through that on the SPX. But as far as today goes, 
the range expected at the moment is S1 possibility of an R2. I do expect to see a bit of a rebound as we go through this week. As I mentioned in the opening comments, I think a lot of a lot of the action that happened around today was the algorithms and some pullback after the really terrible report that came out last Friday on the unemployment. We we go to the SPX and what we're seeing here is 4516 was the STX number. We printed 4513. We closed just above STX. And as I mentioned, we're up about four handles in the futures. So the expectations for today are going to be somewhere around an S2 to the possibility of an R2. I expect to see a little bit of an expanded range today. There's really minimal news coming out today that's going to drive the markets at all. But as far as that goes, we're just looking at a bit of consolidation after the weakness that we saw yesterday. Looking at the weekly chart, we did see a low of, of 13 yesterday, 4513. This is a weekly SPX and S1 4519. So we're just below that 4500 is should be a rock solid number. And on a weekly basis, I talked about this R1. I don't see us getting to an R2 number, but that would be the extreme on the upside. S2, R2 expectations is probably extreme for S2, R1, and this is a weekly range. Next market I'll cover is the NASDAQ. NASDAQ is up 925 overnight. We've been down to 15,658. We're looking at 15,651 is S1. As I've talked a lot about, the profile in the NASDAQ is a bit stronger. And also, I mentioned in the opening comments that the FANG stocks and these large cap tech stocks, they've actually ended up being a defensive stocks. This is where people are running to when we see some weakness, which is sort of interesting, kind of in contrast to what we've seen in previous cycles. So S1, 15,651 possibility of getting toward the R2 number, 15,723. The high so far tonight's been 15,691, so almost an R1. So I do expect to see this market recover. The PPMs are actually turning up on the daily. They look pretty decent here, and especially since we're right at trend mode across the board. The next market I'll cover is the Russell. As I look at the daily chart, the 10 period moving average 2265, we have a plus PPM1 at 0.30, suggests that we will hold this level. If we print down there overnight, we're seeing the futures up about three handles right now. So there is a little bit of support showing up in all of the indexes. The as we look at the market grid for tomorrow, it looks like the possibility of an S1, maybe an R2 back towards 2286. And the number to continue to watch closely is 2254. That will be major support. The next market I'll cover is the 10-year treasury. We saw the yields spike up. They actually closed above the RTX 1.6, 1.36. We finished at 1.37. This suggests we're likely to go sideways. S1, 1.36, 1.35. Very narrow range here expected for tomorrow, but we're seeing these PPMs really start to turn up. We're getting a lot of upward momentum here. PPM1 at 0.88, PPM2, 0.29, and PPM3 is turning up but is not quite at trend level. Right now there is a confirmed trend when we look at the PPM1. About two sessions ago I talked about this cycle low that was coming in. This is definitely proving out to be very accurate and if we can take out the 1.375 level then there, the next level we'll look at the weekly chart briefly. 
and that next level is around 1.43. I didn't know if we were going to be able to get above that level, but 1.37 is the 40-week moving average. I've talked about this over the past several weeks, that this rising pattern within the 40 would actually pull the market toward that yield level, 1.37. We printed there today. It looks like the cap will be around 1.42, 1.44 should be the upside. If we close above that, then we're going to see these PPMs really start to roll. They're still somewhat negative, so that usually will suggest that we'll end up in a range between 1.30 and 1.43. The next market that I will cover tonight is gold. Gold traded down sharply after printing all the way up to the 1833.50 level. I've talked a lot over the last couple of weeks that 1834 is major resistance. We saw it trade down into the 21 period moving average, 1794, low of 1793.70. We're seeing a little bit of a bid overnight. We're looking at trying to trade back above that 40 period average at 1800.70. I do expect to see it trade back toward 1813 to 1816 over the next couple of days. We're actually seeing some decent momentum start to come out of PPM2, which is at 0.18, which should be enough to hold the markets at the levels that we printed tonight. I expect to see some rebound continue. Looking at the market grid for today, we're looking at a minimum of 1804, possibility of an R2, 1811. You can see the other numbers I talked about, 1817 is right into a R3 level. The support should hold at 1792. Just reviewing the weekly chart, I did not expect to see the weakness that we saw yesterday, but we printed down RTX is 1799 on a weekly basis. We printed down to 1793. I do expect to see us get back toward that 1813, 1818 level. And I'll be talking about this market and how we closed there by the end of the week on um, what the expectations will be set up going forward. The final market that I'll cover tonight will be Bitcoin. Bitcoin dropped quite a bit. I did not see this type of weakness, but I did mention last night if we saw anything that looked like 43,000, that was going to be a buy. We traded down to 42. 989. We're trading last at 46,000. I expect it will be above this STX number. That should be a good support now, 46,273. We also have a 10 period moving average, 43,175. That, that's got a PPM rate value of 2.98. So the probabilities of it going below that level, and I discussed this in last night's video, was about 10%. That was your magic number. I mentioned last night that buy the dip at around 43,000 if you saw it. As far as the trend goes, there weren't, wasn't a lot of damage done here, but it does look like we're going to set up maybe into a sideways consolidation. The levels that we printed up on the top, the high was 52,925 and 52. 875 was R1, so so far we've done R1 and we've exceeded STX. So I look for this thing to stabilize over the next couple of days. Just quickly looking at the daily chart, this thing just blew through everything down here, but we traded down toward the 200-day moving average, 45.046. So that's about the only numbers you could find down here, 44,837. Those weekly numbers were the key numbers to watch, and that's where they held so far. So it will be interesting to see what type of pattern sets up in the next couple of days. If we continue this volatility, I'll cover this as we go into the end of the week. This will complete the video for tonight. Thank you for watching, and we'll talk to you tomorrow night. Hey everyone, Bob Kendall here. Just want to thank you all for watching my videos. If you do want to support the channel, go to www.kendallreport.com/wavetech. Sign up for our software. You get Market Grid 
on 165 individual stocks and indices. You also will get 16,500 buy and sell signals on our entire database. I thank you so much for supporting the channel. Those of you who have already signed up, thank you so much.